Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs, and cross watchers. This is your tarot reading for the week ahead whenever you're finding this. If you're watching along as I post because you're subscribed, this is for the week of September 16th through the 22nd, 2024. So there's a lot going on astrologically this week. This is the final week of Virgo season. The sun will be moving into Libra on Sunday, the 22nd. And then on Sunday, the 22nd, we also have the autumn equinox. Daytime and nighttime will be equal. Uh, or the spring equinox if you're in the southern hemisphere. And uh, additionally, eclipse season uh, begins this week. On September 17th, we will have the Pisces lunar eclipse. Um, and essentially between the two eclipses, so there, there's two eclipse seasons per year. Every six months we have an eclipse season, uh, a lunar and solar eclipse. So we're beginning uh, the second eclipse season of 2024 uh, with Pisces and then a solar eclipse in Libra on October 2nd. So in between those two dates, it's going to be a time of intense changes in most of our lives. Uh, a lot of drama uh, tends to happen during eclipse seasons. Life seems to be a little bit more intense during these eclipse seasons. Um, so pay attention to that. Uh, we have Mars in Cancer, which is your opposite sign. So your energy, depending on how that works with your individual chart, may feel a little bit more passive. Um, there's just so much going on. Pluto is doing its final rounds in Capricorn. We talked about that in a previous reading. Uh, that's going to be one of the biggest uh changes that'll happen for you, but that'll create some really positive shifts in your life uh, from like November onwards for like the next 16 years or so. And um, so we're doing a last hurrah uh, in, to Pluto being in the sign of Capricorn for you, and that's the last time it'll be in your sign for your lifetime. Uh, so anyways, let's dive into the reading. First card out is the world. <laughs> yeah. And the world is the final major arcana card in the tarot. It's extremely significant. And uh, it really does give off that energy of, I finished out a massive karmic chapter in my life and I'm ready to start the next chapter. So Capricorn, it would not surprise me if you were finishing out some sort of major project this week or major manifestation, or major relationship, or some big chapter in your life may be coming to a close. And I'm feeling this excitement for the next chapter because you may already be getting visions and ideas of what this next season of life will look like for you. It feels like you're saying goodbye during this time to a lot of uh, restrictive people, uh, ways of thinking and like self-pressure especially maybe coming to a close. It's like dramas from the past, a narcissism from the past. It's You've already said farewell to that. But energetically, you know, when we say a goodbye to someone, when we cut karmic ties or finish out these chapters, there's like a shadow period afterwards where you might not be in contact with someone anymore. You may not be engaging in some sort of chapter of your life anymore, but the energies are settling back down. And I feel like this week is that final week where energies are settling back down and um, you're getting a full vision of what's to come next in your life and you may actually get started. Let's see what else comes out. We have the star in reverse, okay. Confidence may be taking a little bit of a hit this week, so pay attention to that. Like I said, Mars is in Cancer, your opposite sign. Uh, Mars does not do well in Cancer. I know this firsthand because my Mars is in Cancer. Um, this this can create like your personal energy levels, feelings of confidence, feelings of vigor may be a little bit low. Uh, you might not be feeling as confident in like your ability to be successful or even like in your body, your appearance, you just might not be feeling uh, exceptionally beautiful. So that's one area of life. If I were a Capricorn, I would try focusing on this week, you know, uh, trying to make yourself feel beautiful, feel good, and just put a conscious effort towards feeling confident in your abilities. Okay, that area of life may just need a little bit more conscious intention this week. We have the seven of cups. Yeah, daydreaming, fantasizing, Seven of Cups isn't necessarily a bad card. Um, some of you may be getting caught up in the daydreams, like fantasizing about someone, fantasizing about love itself, you know, falling deep in love, uh, 
you know, it, I feel like the Seven of Cups can sometimes represent that period in relationships where it's very new and it's like the honeymoon phase and, you know, you're not fully at a place of like complete and utter trust in somebody or knowing them and their ins and outs. The mysterious side of them uh, still prevails and you may find yourself in a state of limerence, fantasizing about what life could be like with them, whether you're talking to them or not, you know? So there is this sort of fantasy romance element of this week ahead. And, you know, this can project itself into your life in so many different ways, depending on who you are. For some people, you may be in a new relationship, in a new connection, heavily thinking about somebody, daydreaming about them and what your life may be. For others of you, you may have a really heavy crush on someone <laughs> and for others of you you know maybe it's just that you're really into like fantasy and romance novels or movies right now you know this energy can come through in so many different ways it's very dreamy though very uh romantic very like in your feelings but uh it's like the opposite of logic it's it's very emotional and daydreamy fantasy oriented and i i wouldn't be that shocked if you guys were engaging in like fantasy things this week, um, it is Ren Fair season, so that may be an example of this. Um, or even like just watching fantasy sci fi movies, books, things like that. Um, or, you know, getting lost in your own creative processes. Second row of cards that we have the Five of Swords in reverse right underneath that world card. So this actually confirms uh, what I was just saying, where it's like you could have already walked away from some toxic individuals or things from your past that weren't for you. And um, as, as mentioned, there is a shadow period after you walk away. So you might not have necessarily uh, been feeling so attached to someone or something from your past anymore like let's just say earlier in 2024 you had to cut someone out of your life or you you went through a breakup or you just took time to be single focus on yourself whatever um even though you were technically like quote unquote over something or someone that shadow period after the the tie the energetic tie was severed uh was still in play and I really feel like what this eclipse season is going to bring for you is like all of the energetic dust from that is going to completely settle this week, bringing you back to a place where you're, you're ready. You are ready for something or someone new to come in. And depending on the type of loss or ending or cutting of cord uh, that you experienced, it depends on how long that shadow period was for you. Like if, if you were just cutting off like an old situationship that was, you know, on and off, like you, you talked for a few months, your shadow period may have been a little bit shorter. If you, you know, divorced somebody you were like married to for like 40 years, your shadow period may have been a lot longer, you know? So it's different for all Capricorns. If feels like you were in this place of letting all this energy settle. And this may have been a process that you were not overly consciously aware of, like only semi-consciously aware of that you were, you know, allowing things to settle a little bit. We have the magician. Yeah, this is confirmation for me of like new energies um, opening up, new portals opening up for you. You're just about ready for a brand new chapter. And that new chapter is starting to shape up this week. Like you're starting to get images in your mind, visions in your mind of like what's to come. And it feels like there's new energies in your life that is sort of like formulating. And these could be new relationships. These could be new friendships, new creative ideas you have in mind for yourself, new projects that you want to work on, things like that. It feels very new though, new manifestations, not tied or tethered to a long complicated history. And then final card out is the emperor. Yeah, putting those ideas into practice, uh, incorporating it into your daily routine in some way, shape, or form, and you know, getting grounded in how this is gonna show up in your physical life. That's what this week really feels like. So stunning, significant week for you for sure. Six cards out, four of them are major arcana cards, not to mention the astrological significance of this week ahead. Um, it's just very powerful. And the sun is finishing its journey through a fellow earth sign. So 
this week will be powerful for you because, you know, whenever the sun is in another earth sign, it's very harmonious for you as a Capricorn. So yeah, I feel like uh, you may be getting some gifts from the universe because of this. It's like, especially with the world card coming out, it's like, thank you for, you know, being a part of this earthly season. Here is my parting gift. So Virgo may be gifting you. Virgo energy may be gifting you um, some, some interesting new things in your life. <laughs> All right. Awesome reading there, guys. Make sure you watch your eclipse reading once it's posted. They should be posted on the 14th, 15th, and 16th. So check that out when it is released. It will really dive into the crazy intense changes that are probably going to happen to you between September 17th through October 2nd. So, and, and that season, that eclipse season already kind of began. We're in the shadow, the, the pre-shadow period, the, the prelude energy currently, um, at the time that I'm filming this and, uh, after October 2nd, we'll be in the shadow period of that. So a lot can happen during those, this, these next few weeks are just going to be filled with life and changes and intensity. So um, if you want to see how that will show up in your life, definitely keep tuned, subscribe to the channel for that, turn on the notifications to be notified every time I post. Like this video, comment how it resonates down below. Doing these things helps the channel out so much. And if you want a personal reading with me one-on-one, -on -one, the link to that is always in the description box, spiritpsychic.org. The personal readings, you can really ask whatever questions you want. Uh, they're kind of structured a little bit to give you an idea of like what to talk about, but you can ask whatever questions you want in, in any of the readings. Um, so check that out. I also offer life coaching, shamanic life coaching sessions, and uh, they're essentially hour long readings where every week you send me your questions. I will do an hour long reading for you and send it to you seven days later. And in between you have access to daily email correspondence with me. Um, basically talking about whatever you want to talk about. <laughs> okay. And I also offer my intention oils there, which are, very powerful. <laughs> okay. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.